Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello and welcome to the Neil Before Pod interview segment. I'm your host Craig, and I recently had the pleasure of chatting to actor Jesse Hutch, who currently plays Agent Tavarov on Batwoman. We talk about how he learned who gets the snacks on set, what it takes to become a well-rounded performer, and so much more. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm delighted to be joined on Neil Before Pod with Jesse Hutch. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being on. It's a pleasure to speak to a recurring role, major recurring role on Batwoman. So thank you for coming on. <laughs> so let's just start with your early career. How did you get into the acting business and how did you kind of build up to where you are now? Well, that's always an interesting question because it's been about 20 years for me in this business and I feel like that journey is still happening. So it's like, how do you crush that into a nutshell version? <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's so much of the business I haven't gotten into yet, right? I mean, you always have goals and people you'd like to work with and projects you'd like to do. And so I think that's why I'm in the industry is because it's always evolving and there's always new goals and new endeavors. So for me, I think the start of this business, it was a series of events that at that time, to me, were new and different. And yet every time I went through an event or an experience, it allowed me to, I think, recognize that this was something I really wanted to do. You know, I mean, first, was I even cut out to be an actor? Second, am I any good at it? Third, is there longevity here? Because I mean, there's obviously a lot of challenges in this business. It's, it's highly competitive. You don't just like book a role in your set and you're paying your bills every month. There's this ebb and flow. And so for me, I think it was... Yeah, it was just like a step-by-step, day-by-day, month-by-month. Now it's been year-by-year, thankfully. And once I decided to really pursue the film industry, I think I I knew pretty quick that, man, I really enjoy this. I mean, my first day on set was on a series called Dark Angel, which was created by James Cameron. I never got to meet him. Right out of the gate, I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I was in. Didn't mean I was any good at it yet. But I was in. Hopefully that answers your question. It's definitely been a journey. There is for sure a longer version to that of like specific events and where was I and what did I learn from that experience and how did that move me forward and who in my life supported me at that time, right? That allowed me to keep going because there's many times that you want to give up, at least for me. Not that I just wanted to quit, but there was times that I would question and go like, man, can I actually, for example, support myself financially in this business? Am I actually good enough to get more opportunities? Am I going to get more booking? There's a lot of questions that you have, right? Yeah. And so it's it's a learning curve and I'm very thankful for it. I, I definitely think this industry is, it's almost like a chiropractic session daily. I'm sorry, not chiropractic. It's like for your mental and emotional game, you're always being challenged, right? And what you've said there, every creative will have felt that at one time or another. And, you know, it's just mm-hmm. that constant keeping yourself motivated, I guess. And it sounds like you've, managed to do that obviously as you say not always 100% successfully but you're still going you're still doing it year after year and it seems like you've found a way to forge on so they're really good yeah I think it's important to recognize the things that you should be thankful for and I'm very thankful that I am able to do this for work yeah. all the time am I always on set no but am I always auditioning or working or developing my own projects or yes I'm very thankful that I can be there because coming up in my career, there's been times when I had to get another job, right? I had a part-time job doing other things and you have to split your time and split your mind almost to be like, okay, this is what I really want to do, but I got to do this to put food on the table. And then of course, as I started having kids, that became even more serious, right? I got married. That was like, oh, okay. I got to support my wife. Okay. I have one kid two kids. Now I got three kids. Can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is yes, it is possible. And you just got to keep plugging away. And of course, my wife is a, an amazing, massive support through all of this. It's just couldn't do any of this without her. Not a chance. Cool. So you talked about your first role on Dark Angel. What was it like so early in your career going on to a big show like that, a big science fiction, high budget thing. What was working on that like so early on? Oh, it was a fantastic experience. I mean, all of a sudden I'm on a set, there's trucks everywhere, there's people everywhere. They're setting things up and tearing things down and blowing stuff up. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I remember one particular day I'm sitting there and the AD comes up to me and is like, hey, can I get you a snack? And I'm like, 
no, no, it's cool. Like, I'll just go. And he's like, no, no, no. You sit down. I'm, I'm going to go get the snack. And I'm like, no, no, like I can get my own snack. I'm a grown man. I'll go get my own snack. And he's like, no, you're going to sit in the chair. I will get the snack and I will bring it to you. And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, because we're paying you to be the actor. And he's like, if we need you on set right now and you're way down the road getting a chocolate bar, we're wasting money. And I was like, oh. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, I will have a chocolate bar, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a big kind of moment for me where I was like, oh, okay. Part of my job is to actually make sure that I'm in the right place at the right time. Good to know. <laughs> but overall, man, I got to do action. I got to do prosthetics. I got to work with some cool people. The role was perfect for me because at that time it was a guest star role that the character didn't even speak with verbal language. And I say that was perfect for me because it was my first professional acting job. And I grew up in a small farm town. And so my accent was actually quite thick. And I spoke very fast. I cut my words off. I uh, had a very East Coast vibe. And so it kind of worked out because I sounded ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it, it worked out great. Yeah. To have a role where I didn't speak. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and a really important lesson early on as well about who gets your snacks. That's always good. That's to right. <laughs> That's right. I still like to get my own snacks, but I have to be very strategic. So I always make sure to plan and I'm like, okay, I'm, all right, I'm going to craft. You'll be right back. <laughs> plan in your snack breaks. There's a good mm -hmm. piece of advice for anyone starting in the industry. It mm -hmm. doesn't <laughs> matter what you do for a living. You should always plan your snack breaks, people. Yeah. I live by that myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I need a snack break. Hold on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You have appeared in a variety of things, science fiction, film, TV, drama, everything. So do you have a preference or do you just like to go where the work is? I definitely really like to be able to jump around, but that's because I like variety. And I think it's exciting to have, you know, the fans or the viewer audience not really be able to pinpoint and peg you down. Uh, I guess it's maybe a bit of a challenge for me. Even early on in my career, I didn't like the fact that I get sent out for the same type of role all the time even though that is kind of part of developing in your career. I, I really enjoy jumping around. I, I think it's fantastic because that's the human heart, right? I mean, it can experience so many different emotions. And so why not make different projects that can compel or pull those things out of people, right? I mean, you're sitting at home and, you know, I, I like to watch a, a good action movie here and there, but I also like a good sci-fi, like a thriller, you know, a rom-com. I, I mean, a Christmas movie, I, you just jump all over the place. So. If I can do that as a performer, I think it's fun because it keeps people guessing. They're like, wait, didn't I just see Jesse and Batwoman? Now he's in this rom-com and then like hold the phone. Now he's in a Christmas movie. What is happening here? <laughs> it keeps things interesting for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. This website is big on comic book and nerdy stuff. So I see that you played two different characters on Smallville three years apart. So what was it like coming back to a show? Oh, it's fantastic. It's pretty cool to be able to come back i think if you have an opportunity and producers are up for it then why not right and sometimes that's even their goal supernatural for example actually made it a bit of a goal who can we bring back and how and let's do it again as a performer you're like oh fantastic i'm not burned on the show i can get back on it again i'm in and the first time you got a really cool death scene as well <laughs> i've had a number of death scenes i mean when was the last i don't think i've had a death scene recently but i'd say the first what, 10 years of my career, I wish I could go through and make like a little demo reel of all my characters' deaths because there's just a ridiculous amount. And the second time you did an effect shot, you got saved by Clark. What was it like doing visual effects in that way? What's involved in, in doing that? And, and is it difficult to get used to sort of visualizing what will come next when you can't see it directly? Are you referring to... You almost got electrocuted in uh, your second okay, character yes. appearance. Yeah, yeah, that was the second one. I was confusing it with the one where I was the swim team captain or something. <laughs> There's always so much to learn. And you just take every day as a learning opportunity. I think it's fantastic. You just show up with a heart that's ready to learn from others. It's always a good day because there's so many talented people in this business that you're never going to run out of stuff to learn, right? Whether it's about visual effects or action or just how to be a human being on set or an acting technique. It's a great opportunity to be around people that are very good at their jobs. And I imagine Smallville was a really fun set to be on. I know from 
seeing Michael Rosenbaum, for example, he's always very funny when he's not on camera. And obviously it was a very popular show. And I can imagine it was just a lot of fun to be around all that. Yeah, it absolutely. It was. And again, I mean, if you're a creative and you get to go and work and be what you want to be, how can you not be having a good day? <laughs> I mean, yes, obviously there's work stresses and things that come with work and we all have that, right? But at the end of the day, you need to know as an actor and a performer that when you're on your way home from set, that's a good day. And what's Tom Welling like? Is he, is he intense? Is he anything else? <laughs> oh, I mean, I haven't seen Tom in what decades. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time, but he was always cordial. He was always nice to me. He was always doing his job well. I mean, there's a lot of pressure or there can be a lot of kind of go, go, go stress on any lead in any series. And so you need to remember that when you're, you know, for me, I'm popping in and doing a guest star in Smallville. That's another lesson that I've learned throughout my career is you can't just take one experience of somebody and then think you know them. And so for me to be able to show up to set and at least just say, hey, Tom, how you doing? And How's your night? What'd you have for lunch? It's those little simple things that allow you to sort of be human. And Tom was always just showing up and doing his job. And he was nice to everybody. As far as I had, you know, the pleasure to be in that circle with. But I mean, dude got to play Superman. I and mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, sort of. <laughs> There's a lot of contention around whether he's actually Superman. But yeah. Oh, totally. There's a lot of speculation and questions and i mean now smallville's kind of back in action right on the cw with with superman and lois yes its legacy lives on i loved smallville it was my show back in the day i absolutely loved it i was hooked on it and it was great that it lasted 10 years 10 years ago today as we record or 10 years ago yesterday as we record when the finale aired wow so who is your favorite character i was always a big fan of clark and lex the two of them just i love that dynamic uh-huh. yeah just great TV. Good show. Yeah, well, went for a long time. Yeah, it did. <laughs> and another show I love that you were on is The 100 as well. You were in one episode of that. That must have been a really interesting set to be on. Certainly the end product always looked very grueling and difficult in terms of what they were trying to achieve. Was that your experience of it as well? Oh, I had a blast on that. I had the coolest costumes. I was like this warrior guy living in the bush and I had a mask and I come out of the darkness. And, and actually Marshall Virtue directed the episode that I was in. He was also the stunt coordinator of the 100. And interestingly enough, he is now the stunt coordinator of Batwoman. And he also directed one of the episodes that I was in. It just aired this past weekend, I think. And even to tie that all together, Marshall Virtue was actually my stunt double on Dark Angel, my first job ever. (laughs) And so this is a super cool cycle of, wow, it's amazing how you can just sort of run into people literally decades later. And we're at a totally different part of life, right? I mean, we're both married now. We both have kids. It's fantastic to be able to see Marshall and go, man, you're directing now and I'll, um, I get to act with you. And this is fantastic. And it must be comforting to work with people over and over again, especially if you enjoyed working with them before, just seeing them in different jobs. It's super cool. And you don't always get to pick that, right? You do your best, but sometimes I won't see friends for like 10 years because they're on a show like Supernatural, let's say. And I'm like, man, where have you been? They're like, I've been on Supernatural. Like, oh, that makes sense. Because <laughs> if I'm not on that show, we'll never see each other. But it's very much a uh, community-based business. All these people, right? Even if you do a movie, boom, all of a sudden, all these people together, hundreds and hundreds of people that you see, hundreds that you don't. And we're all working together to make this project. And you're just thrown into it, right? There's no like, well, I'm going to take a month to warm up to you. It's like first day, boom. All right, cool. Let's work together. Let's make this happen. And you get to know people. And then hopefully, yeah, you do get to see them over the years and you get to develop this sort of long-term relationship that is disconnected, but connected, if that makes any sense. And as a viewer, I see on the CW, particularly all the same names sort of turning up again, people are always showing up in different shows and different roles. So it seems to be a network that likes to keep working with people. Has that been your experience? You've done quite a few things with them. Yeah. I, I mean, I have no control over any of that, but as a performer, you are constantly auditioning for things. So unless you're going to say no, you're always saying yes, right? So yeah. you just audition, 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 see what happens. And very thankful that CW was like, hey, cool. Jesse's going to play Agent Tabaroff. And I've been enjoying it, man. It's super cool to be able to sort of step into Gotham City, and just be a part of that. Never thought I'd be a part of Gotham City somehow, right? <laughs> in that sort of universe and in that world. I'm in. I love it. 
And you had a decent sized role on Arrow as well as Officer Daly. You were in mm-hmm. the Brother Blood mask for a bit. You got to fight the Arrow and you were killed by, I think, Laurel. I think she shot you, something like that. If I remember well <laughs> enough. It's been a while since I've seen season two. It's interesting because it is a connected universe that they've brought you back as a completely different person for another show that's in that universe. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I mean, it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it, right? It's not like there's one person that I can single out that I could sit down and say, hey, did you single-handedly decide to put me back? I don't know who's seen what. I don't always know who's in charge necessarily. But all I can do as a performer is do my auditions, put my best foot forward. I like to train and prepare so that I can hopefully be the most well-rounded performer I can be. And if someone wants to hire me, then I'm ready to go out of the gate. I mean, it'd be nice for people to just go unanimously. Yes, Jesse Hutch is the guy, hire him. And I could start tomorrow and be ready, right? Whether that's mentally, emotionally, physically, just be ready to go. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity that that woman was like, well, he was an arrow in season two. Maybe we can't hire him. You know what I mean? Instead, they were like, no, that's the guy. Like We want him. And that makes me feel good as a performer. And when I show up, I want to bring my A game. So that when they're watching dailies or they're seeing what I'm doing as a performer, they can go, yes, we made the right choice, right? Every week, every episode, yes, Jesse Hutch was the right choice. Excellent. He's still the right choice. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) He's still the right choice. (laughs) And again, I don't always get to have that conversation with people, but through my work, I hope that I am sending that dialogue out. You know what I mean? Here you go, team. I've given you hopefully a, a really great product that works for you. You know what I mean? And it's definitely been long enough since Arrow Season 2. So it's unlikely that people will remember too clearly as well (laughs) after all that time. It's been, what, nine years, eight years since Season 2? Well, I had one kid then, I think. (laughs) Completely different world. (laughs) You did have a bit of a fight scene with, I presume there was a mixture of Stephen Amell in the scene and stunt people. How involved were you in the actual physical fighting of it? Did you get training and all that stuff? I'm always trying to be as involved as I can be in the stunts. I actually am a fully unionized stunt performer as well. I've actually stunt doubled other actors. It is something that once in a while in between jobs, I have the opportunity, I'll just go do it because I really enjoy it. And a lot of the times I don't even post about it. I don't put anything up. I just go do it. And for me, it's just, it's so fun because I love physically training. I've always been interested in stunts. I see these Tom Cruise movies where he gets to tell the story as an actor and he gets to be a part of the action. And I long for that. I really appreciate that. So when I say I want to be a well-rounded performer, that's kind of part of it. I'd like to be there, ready, willing, and able to even step into an action sequence should production allow it, right? I mean, sometimes they won't, sometimes they do. But yeah, since day one, like when I even did Dark Angel, I met the stunt coordinator on that, Mike Mitchell. And from that day forward, I actually became roommates with a stunt performer. His name's Chad Sane. He's a stunt coordinator now, and we're still in touch. And I was training like three times a week with those guys, even though I was pursuing acting. And so even now, I still train physically. I got my stunt gear, right? I, I got my harness, my back pads. I'll, I'll show up to set with my stunt bag and you know my helmet and I'm ready to go just in case they need something. And, oh, I love it. You think of movies like Jason Bourne and characters like that where you're like, all right, I'm going to be an actor till the story and I get to do a fight scene or John Wick, right? Guys like Keanu Reeves who goes out and he just trains hard. I see these videos of him being just awesome and I'm up for that. I like the challenge and I would love more of the opportunity to honor the people that I'm playing, hopefully. Sometimes you're playing a character and you have a very short amount of time to be someone who spent their entire lives to be that type of person. If all of a sudden I'm playing a Navy SEAL, oh man, I'm not a Navy SEAL, but what can I do to prepare for that? What can I do to honor people who are? There's an aspect of that too, right? Where I think as performers, we should take some responsibility of that. And I want to, you know, if I'm going to play a police officer, I'd like to do my best to honor those people who are police officers so that when they're sitting there watching the show, they go, oh yeah, that's totally what I would do. Or that's not what I would do. Oh yeah, I did the right. Oh, he holstered that the right way. Excellent. Now, disclaimer, in the film and television world, you can't always do it the way that they would do it in real life. Sometimes it just doesn't look right on camera or you don't have time, right? You're just thrown into the mix. You got to play this character and you're going for it. And so you're doing your best. But sometimes you don't have time to be the best, right? Like I'd love to, okay, I'm going to go off and train for this amount of time. Don't always get that opportunity, but I'm open to it. And if someone needs me to be physical and be a part of telling that story, I'm ready. 
and I'm, I'm trained up, I'm agile, I'm focused, and I can come in and be an actor, but I can also have the mindset of a stunt performer and not get caught up in the action emotionally and then start doing things that may endanger myself or others. I think that's also important as well. Yeah, and Stephen Amell was always pretty hands-on with the stunt stuff on Arrow as well, from what I've read. What was it like fighting him, obviously under controlled conditions? Yeah, there's always a, a system in place. I mean, the stunt coordinators and the choreographers, the stunt world's always very professional. Everything's planned and, and usually rehearsed and they go through it. And so you, you always feel comfortable sort of stepping into that. And I mean, things are always worked out, right? Like sometimes they will have doubles or sometimes they will have rehearsals. And so it's pretty natural. I mean, for me anyway, I, I really enjoy it. And I love nothing more than just being open and ready to be like, okay, what are we doing? Who's doing what? How far do I get to go? Stephen Amell's case is he also got doubles. His character was doing a lot more action and things like that. So there's always opportunity for Stephen to do stuff. And then they'll be like, all right, now they're going to have this crazy ratchet where his stunt double gets like you 50 feet through the air. And (laughs) (laughs) so now you just, all right, switch him out. That person goes. It's always planned out well. And it's a fun experience. And it always looks great from what I can tell. I do enjoy out of verse action sequences. I always think they pull them together really nicely. Well, there's a lot of teams working on these CW shows, man. I mean, a lot, and a lot of them now I find are putting more action in. And it's like a full-time thing for a lot of these stunt folks now, right? Even on Batwoman, right? Uh, I mean, Javicia's stunt double, she's got something to do pretty much every day. If she's not on camera, she's rehearsing training in choreography there's always stuff going on i mean that whole team is always working hard behind the scenes and it's got a good energy to it a good flow because they're just in it all the time right so i'm always excited when my character gets to be brought in and i'm a part of it now you feel part of the team it's cool sort of related to stunts would be video game motion capture so you've done a bit of that what's that like just sort of creating a character's movements in a video game with the, the balls on the suit and stuff. Another one of my favorite things, motion capture. It's just so much fun. You're literally in a volume space and you get to generate and create this world. So yes, it's different than acting because a lot of the times they'll show you images or you'll get to see a video reference or you'll make it up as we go, right? The producers will be like, okay, we need a creature like this and they got to move like that. Or we want this character to be this. And so you really get to develop and ask questions. And it's amazing how as soon as someone is watching your every nuance of your body, how it just changes your performance now. If they're like, well, we'd like them to have heavier feet. Okay. That changes you, right? It's all of a sudden, if someone says like, oh, he wears these big ski boots, it changes what you do. You know, they say, well, let's play it like he broke his arm. Okay. It just changes everything. And then I have had the opportunity to work on video games such as Gears of War 4, where I did all the cutscenes. And all the motion capture for the character of JD Phoenix. That was almost two years, I think, of just like ongoing work. I learned so much during that time. And it it was really cool. I got to just be a part of all the acting sequences, but then also do a bunch of the action, right? Whether you're throwing hand grenades or someone's getting knifed or, you know, and then there's the, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. You're going to run at 10%. Now you run at 30%. Now you run at 40%. And so you get your cardio. (laughs) Because some days we're just running. Oh, yeah, you're running through the forest. Okay, now it's windy. Now it's really windy. And you're like, (laughs) how do you run with it? Okay, more wind, less wind. Yeah, let the wind affect your head more. Okay, now it's hitting your body. Oh, you're carrying a heavy bag. Don't forget that. Okay. (laughs) I love it. I would love to do a video game where you get to do the motion capture and the facial capture. I have that opportunity to do each separately. But I'd, I'd love to do a game where... I get to play one of the lead characters and do facial capture and motion capture and, and performance capture. I think that'd be fantastic. Hopefully you'll get to, but it does sound interesting. Sounds a bit like high budget improv in a way, as in now it's windy and you need to pretend it's windy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes they'll be like, you know, I've booked jobs where you just got to play some creature and they'll show you a picture and then they'll have the monitor and they put that character on you. And you see it and you're like, oh, okay, my arms are long. So what is that like? And (laughs) you feel it, right? And you got to get into it. So when you watch movies like Planet of the Apes, right? And you see Andy Serkis and the work that he's doing. And then Terry Notary did all the movement choreography for that. That's just super cool, man. Because, I mean, they're blending a lot of cool technology with performance. And I'm in if anybody's looking. (laughs) I think that's a really cool combination to be able to be an actor who's going to have some form of a creature put on you, but you get to emote your heart through that. And I think that's 
it's just a whole nother level of, I don't know what, even what you call it, a performing or challenge. And you've done a bit of directing as well. Is that something you intend to go back to? What's your sort of experience of directing? I'm guessing you've seen a lot of how directors work on different things you've been on and you would have adapted some of that yourself. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Being in front of the camera has allowed me to really just through osmosis, almost take in a lot of information about what people do and how they do it. And I'm always watching to see what works and what doesn't. And I love directing. I don't want to give up acting in order to direct, but I believe they go hand in hand. And so a lot of my directing experience, you know, I have been hired out on certain things along the way, but haven't quite done the big project yet that's opened up the doors for me to do bigger stuff. And so we have been developing, my business partner and I, we've been developing our own projects. The last thing we did was a proof of concept for a series and we've just been developing the script. And so we thought, hey, let's go out and actually film something. So we blew up a van. We had some shootouts. I had 18 unionized actors as a part of it. So I was able to direct that, produce it act in it. And I mean, some hats you wear out of necessity because you need to get something done. But the director's hat was kind of the goal because I want to show people that I can do this, that I do have the experience and the background and the know-how to direct your project. And so, yes, I absolutely am slowly working on that and want to direct more as my career develops. And I will continue to pursue that in, in any way possible along the way. Just on Kavaroff now, it's your current role, recurring role in Batwoman. So how do you see Mm -hmm. the character? Do you see him as an antagonist? Do you see him as someone that has his own agenda? Do you see him as thinking he's a hero? I mean, he definitely has a grudge against Batwoman. That much is clear. (laughs) Even if a character was an antagonist, if he was a true antagonist, would he even recognize he was an antagonist? (laughs) (laughs) Well, definitely not, no. (laughs) That's the question, right? We don't know. (laughs) Uh, Agent Kavaroff, though, is constantly in development, I would say. But you're touching on something here, and there is a definite foundation of, what do I even call it? He's very focused on his job. He does not give up. He's relentless. That's the word I would use. And I think that when someone says no in one direction, he's just going to find another direction to get there. And I do think that the audience is starting to maybe pick up on the fact that Tavrov can be very insensitive. Maybe that's the nice way of putting it. Uh, I'm excited for this week's episode because I think people will start to see, they're going to get to see another side of Tavaroff. I think the most striking scene for me of Tavaroff so far is where he openly discredits Sophie in front of Commander Kane. That just says that he just wants to step over people to get where he wants. 100%, man. <laughs> that's quite accurate. I do think that Tavaroff is very focused and good at his job. And he's not willing to just sort of sit around and wait for someone to allow him an opportunity to move towards the goal that he's trying to achieve. Yeah, he's definitely an interesting character. And I do like that he kind of throws a spanner in the works for Sophie. And then Jacob's obviously a little out of sorts at the moment. So there's plenty of opportunity to mess with him. So it seems like you're just (laughs) getting to rock the boat, which must be a lot of fun. (laughs) I love rocking the boat. (laughs) Yeah, I'm excited to hear what the audience has to say about the boat rocking. (laughs) Yeah, you you nailed it. I think it's an interesting character because he's not just going to roll over and do what you tell him. And does the bat suit look as cool in person as it does on screen? I imagine it does. It all looks cool. I'm constantly in awe of how good people are at their jobs, right from costumes to the lighting, to the camera work, to the stunts and the choreography, set design. I mean, it's pretty cool, man. There's some shots where I'm like, wow, that looks sick. And then they're like, oh, yeah, your mark is right in the middle. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Are you kidding me? Yes. I mean, cool. Cool. I got to stay cool, right? I got to yeah, just do my job, right? Don't freak out. and (laughs) Don't don't be too excited (laughs) on the outside that I don't do my job. But I'm excited. I think it's a great opportunity, too. Like, I love how dark it is, too, at times. Just the, the shadows and the the backlight and the grit kind of, and you know what I mean? It's a cool vibe. It's nice to be in a world that does that. And if you had the chance to sit in the Batmobile? No, I haven't. I always joke though. I'm like, Hey, just going to grab the car real quick. Anybody want a coffee or anything? I was just going to do a quick run. <laughs> it's a cool looking Batmobile. I do like it. Kind of like a bit of a supercar type Batmobile. It's, it's a different take. Yeah. 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 I had my kids with me once in the truck and we were just driving around the studio a lot. And they were like, Oh, there's the car. Oh, sick. <laughs> can can we get out and get in it? I'm like, no. <laughs> How has it been working on a 
COVID set with all the testing and all the safety restrictions that are in place to make sure everything runs smoothly. I imagine it must be quite an adjustment from before. Oh, 100% adjustment for everybody. The crew's always masked up. So there's a high percentage of the crew that I've never seen. I haven't seen their faces. That I miss because I really do appreciate people. And I think it's such an important part of our lives to see someone's face and go, oh, that's who they are. So I, I miss that. And sometimes, it, you know, I'll, I'll see them eating lunch or something and they'll have them and I'll be like, oh, there's your face. Oh, it's a fantastic face. Testing. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm tested on average three times a week. So that's kind of just part of the job, right? You just are going in and doing your testing. So Again, always meeting new people, right? There's a whole new section of people that were never on set before. You have these nurses now and, and you know, different medical people. And, and so that's a, a whole new unique skill set of people that are now on a film set that weren't there before, right? And it's good to find a way to make it safe for everybody and keep everybody working and keep these shows coming out as well, rather than everything just remaining stopped. Every show is a little different, I find. So you just got to find out what the rhythm is and, and what the protocols are. And you just jump in and get it done. So what's next for you? What are your plans for the, the near future? What projects have you got coming up that you can talk about? I'm not sure yet. There's a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of maybes, a lot of avail checks, but nothing in concrete yet. So it's kind of exciting, kind of like, well, what's happening? Uh, what am I doing, right? I'm still filming on Batwoman. Season two is coming to the end here pretty soon, and then it will be a hiatus break. And so I'm not sure what the break holds or what's in store necessarily i know i uh, really want to spend some time with my family and at the same time there's been some cool potential jobs that have come up and we're just waiting to see if someone what's going to happen are they, are they going to sign on the dotted line and we will cross those bridges when we get there but always developing my own stuff like i mentioned that series it's called fox and hunter right now it's kind of a lethal weapon vibe comedy action cool. i really like that combination and i think it's fun and so we're constantly sort of working on that and getting meetings and talking to people and seeing if there's a fit to expand the team. So is that you saying you're in season three of Batwoman then, since you talk about the hiatus break? I don't know if I'm in season three. I actually am not sure. I think those are conversations that will be had during the break. So as a performer, though, you are constantly, you just always got to keep moving as though something's never going to happen, right? You always hope, but I don't know. So I'm still auditioning. I mean, there's been some cool auditions I've had recently where I'm like, oh, that would be such a cool opportunity. <laughs> but in the back of your mind, you're going, oh, man, I wonder if I'm going to hear from them. But you know that you have to be like, just let it go. You're never <laughs> going to hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> anticipation, right? It's like exciting, but it messes you up. I mean, you'd be a mess if you're constantly in anticipation. Like, oh, my God, oh my God. did they call? Did they you check in your emails? Did my agent email? The phone rings and you're like, is it my agent? You know, you can't be like that. you got to chill out. Just do good work and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you have that pretty well down. There's times, though. So last question. I always ask this to everybody. What superpower would you have if you could have anyone and why? Ooh, what superpower could I have? I think kind of like a Wolverine vibe where it'd be like I'd have the ability to just heal super quick from or like maybe Deadpool kind of vibe. Because, I mean, I could do the gnarliest stunt for real with no pads <laughs> and no safety precautions, I'd be like the coolest actor ever. They'd be like, oh man, he just fell off a 30 story building for real, but he healed. <laughs> <laughs> no COVID tests as well. You'd be immune. You'd need it. <laughs> There'd be so much that wouldn't matter. I'd probably be way crazier. I mean, I think I'm fairly crazy now, but I'd be like, oh, you know what? I could probably take that bike off that jump. Uh, that's an unfinished bridge. Exactly. Let's do it. <laughs> And then you could work for hundreds of years as well because you wouldn't age. Uh oh, now we're getting into all that crazy philosophical stuff, right? Where like you outlive your loved ones <laughs> and then life is super difficult and you're depressed. And so uh, maybe I shouldn't have those powers. Then. It's probably better yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of limited only heal from injury type power. I don't know. Something. Yeah. yeah. But no long lifespan. Yeah. Sounds good. What about you? What power would you want? I'd always want speed. I just like to be places instantly. <laughs> like flash speed or like yeah, teleportation? Yeah. Like the flash, yeah. So I could just run and write quickly and all that stuff. Just, yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just let my brain work at super speed and let me move at super speed. I'd get so much. Ah. So you'd be able to meet me at a coffee shop then, no problem over here. Yeah, it would take me two seconds to yeah, boom. reverse the world. Yeah. Right over the ocean. Yeah. 
No problem. Run on water. No hassles whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So thanks very much for coming on the podcast and talking about your career and Batwoman and everything else. And really do wish you all the success with everything you've got planned. Hope to see you more on Batwoman. I think Tavarov's interesting. So it'd be great to have him continue and cause trouble in season three. Oh, there's some trouble coming, I believe. Uh, so let, let me know what you think, especially after this, I think after this weekend. Might get a little more glimpse of what's Tavrov up to? What's going on here? Bit of a tease. This will probably go out after that episode's aired, but it's a reverse tease. There was some <laughs> stuff refers. that happened. So thanks very much for coming on. And as I say, good luck with everything. And really do hope that you get everything you want off the ground and all that good stuff. Oh, thanks, Craig. And I appreciate you taking the time because I know time is of the essence. It's very important to everyone. So I, I really appreciate you uh, setting aside an hour and hanging out with me. It's my pleasure. I love to talk to people that are in my favorite shows. It's just something I love to do. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. That was my chat with Jesse Hutch. I'd like to once again wish him all the best with his future projects. I sincerely hope he succeeds in everything he's working on. If you like what you heard, then don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any major podcasting app. Apple users, please leave us a star rating and a review. If you want to discuss Batwoman, this interview, or anything else, then you can find us on Facebook and Twitter under Neil Before Blog, or leave a comment on neilbeforeblog.co.uk. As always, I hope you'll join us next time on Neil Before Pod.